so many things to do when you arrive in Japan, so many choices. And the only question that remains is, where do you begin? That was unnecessarily dramatic, wasn't it? Might alienate new viewers? Yeah, I'll roll with it, screw it. Wow. It's easy to arrive in Japan and feel somewhat spoilt for choice on where to start. So it got me thinking about all the different places and things you can do to kick off your trip. And I ended up going on Facebook and Twitter and asking viewers, when you come to Japan, what's the first thing that you want to do? Then after posting it, I went off into town for a bit, uh, just, you know, for a stroll, where I came across the greatest PlayStation game that you've probably never heard of. A game known only as Let's Go Bass Fishing. Can you imagine the sheer exhilaration and excitement of catching a digital bass? I mean, fuck, games consoles are practically made for simulations like that. Anyway, afterwards I returned home slightly depressed that I don't own an original PlayStation and thus can't play Let's Go Bass Fishing to find that hundreds and hundreds of people had responded to my question and sharing their stories and experiences, hopes and dreams of things they'd either done or planned to do when arriving in Japan. So today I'm going to share some of them with you and rate them on a scale of 1 to 10 so that you can find some ideas and inspiration for your trip when you come here. Ah, and near the end of the video I'll talk a bit about what I did on my first day five years ago because I don't think I've ever talked about it actually. So then, let's, uh, let's dive in. When I went to Japan and checked in at my hostel, the staff member said, Oh, I bet you want to sleep now. Instead of sleeping, I rented a bike and just cruised around for hours. Yeah, screw you, hostel staff, with your pitiful assumptions. Who needs bedtime when you can cycle across a bridge? To be fair, cycling is probably the best way to see Japan. Because pretty much everyone here cycles, the country is very favourable towards cyclists. Unlike the UK, where drivers actively run over cyclists for fun. One of the best places to rent a bike and cycle around in the Tokyo area is the ancient city of Kamakura on the coastline. Whenever I take people there, we grab some bikes from the station and then just cycle around the back streets and the temples but cycling is a great idea and I'll give that an 8 out of 10. Go to a 7-Eleven and play Onigiri Bingo, a game I made up to try new flavours, where I grab a random flavour without looking what it is and eat it. Well, if it's got food in it, it's instantly a good idea. Uh, if you don't know what onigiri is, it's basically just a rice ball with a different filling in it. All convenience stores have a big section with onigiri in them. Uh, my personal favourite flavour is tuna mayonnaise, but there's all sorts. There's fish eggs, salmon, uh, sour plums, avoid that one. And you can find yourself standing there sometimes for ages, spoiled for choice, not knowing which one to go for. So grabbing one randomly isn't a bad idea, so give that a 7 out of 10. Grab some real pudding. I only eat pudding in Japan. Every local pudding here, Singapore, is utter crap. Yeah, real pudding, 10 out of 10. Every, again, every convenience store has a dessert section as well, where you can find everything from yogurts and cakes to kind of traditional Japanese sweets. And I urge you to check it out. If not to eat a dessert, then for research purposes. Yeah. Sleep. And then climb Mount Fuji with bottles and bottles of Bakari sweat. <laughs> Nah, it's way too ambitious for your first day. Three out of ten. Laugh out loud, sleep. Me and my friend didn't sleep for four days when we arrived due to excitement. Alice, sleep. Ah, to which Alice replied, ah, ha, 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 ha. Sleep? God, rebels, absolute bloody rebels. <laughs> Don't know what they did though, zero out of ten. Onsen, definitely. Then I'd go about town and try to make conversation with the locals. Optimistically happy face, but also anxiously sweating face. Why not make conversation with the locals in the onsen? After all, you'll be sat naked side by side in nature's hot tub. It seems like a pretty good place to start and uh, break the ice with the locals. But if you don't have a chance to go to an onsen resort out in the countryside, which I highly do recommend, the next best thing is Onsen World, or Edo Onsen World, in Odaiba, Tokyo. It's an onsen theme park with an Edo era styled street, and you can wander around in a colourful yukata and eat and drink in between dipping in the onsen. It's a bit pricey, but if you can't get out to the countryside, I highly recommend it. And uh, you have to go to an onsen whilst in Japan. 9 out of 10. 
kiss the ground because I will have just survived a long flight with a three year old. Then on a geary and a train platform beer. Yeah, nothing says role model like watching your dad down a beer in a rice ball on a station platform. Uh, that said, I wouldn't expect anything less from somebody whose nickname is simply drinking in Japan. Good thing about Japan, of course, is it's okay to drink in public. You can walk down the street or train station platform with a beer in hand and don't you don't have to worry. And when friends come over and visit, the first thing we usually do is actually go to a convenience store, buy a few drinks and then just wander around the city for a few hours. And it's a great way of checking out the city, so uh, yeah, can't recommend it enough, 9 out of 10. My boyfriend and I are going in late September and he doesn't know that the first thing we're going to do is a Japanese love hotel. Ha 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 ha, sly face. Well, providing he doesn't watch this video, your secret is safe with us. 6 out of 10. Do make sure you get a good love hotel though, uh, as it can be the difference between having a bath with a jacuzzi and a bath with a cockroach, and unfortunately, uh, I've experienced both. Who knows, if you're especially lucky, you might even get a teddy bear cave or a questionably small cage. No doubt it will be giving my boyfriend's mum a massive, overly friendly, westerner-style bear hug at the airport. We'll be meeting his family for the first time this year in Sapporo, then going to Harizakaya and eating everything! Everyone! Brilliant! I'm not sure what will alienate your boyfriend's mum the most. The western style bear hug or the sight of watching her son's girlfriend single handedly eating everything. Uh, but nonetheless, going to an izakaya is an amazing idea, no matter where you are in Japan. It's an incredible place to soak up the atmosphere, the food, the drink, and meet the locals all at once. So, izakaya, going to an izakaya, 9 out of 10. Try to find the increasingly dwindling arcade machines where you can play Cho Chavadai Gaishi. Yeah, you can't go wrong with an arcade. You can find them on pretty much every shopping street in Japan. My two favourite games are good old Mario Kart. No, 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 no. <laughs> and uh, a taiko drumming game where you beat the shit out of a drum in time with the music. Very good stress relief. Unfortunately though, the game Chor Chabadai Gaishi has become quite rare, it's pretty hard to find it. The expression literally means to flip one's table, and in the game you play the role of an angry father having a mental breakdown. As you sit around the dinner table with your family annoying you more and more, you hit the table again and again until eventually you lose it, flip the table over, and destroy your family in one foul swoop. And then you get to watch it over and over in slow motion replay. I actually featured it in a video, one of the first videos I ever made, because I stumbled across this game and I was so in awe of the concept. I've never seen anything like it. So visiting an arcade, 9 out of 10. That frog bar. That frog bar. One of the strangest and most disturbing experiences you could probably have in Tokyo. <laughs> couldn't imagine doing it on your first day, but it involves a bar and a somewhat peculiar owner who does everything from dress up like a frog and use puppet teddy bears to deliver drinks. And of course, tossing off a newspaper. I'll give it an 8 out of 10. It was pretty memorable, that's for sure. Funnily enough, the first thing I did when I arrived in Japan was actually meet Chris Broad himself in Tokyo during an Odigo event. Meeting me, I'll give that a 1 out of 10. Yeah, I always feel sorry for viewers that bump into me in Tokyo or Sendai or wherever, uh, because you can actually see their initial excitement quickly turn to an expression of disappointment. My favourite encounter recently was in Shibuya Station. I was running to get a train, that's right, running, uh, and a guy that I ran past quickly looked up at me and shouted, All right, YouTube! And that is the sort of exciting and thrilling encounter you can get on an almost daily basis if you become a YouTuber. McDonald's! McDonald's? Why? Don't you dare say why! It's so fresh, way different, and all the burgers have egg in it. Happy face. And to prove his dedication to this plan, he's even attached four photos of this groundbreaking revelation. McDonald's Japan does have a few unique menu items, like uh, choco fries, god forbid. But for the most part, it's pretty much just your standard McDonald's, so I'm going to give it a 4 out of 10. And anyway, why go there when you can try something different, like Moss Burger, or Freshness Burger, or Wendy's. 
Not gonna lie, the first thing I wanna do is head out to Shibuya or Shinjuku to look around and be surrounded by the lights. Given that my first night was in Shinjuku, actually this was the second thing I did and uh, it didn't disappoint. Having never set foot in Japan before, I would say Shinjuku is the most culture shock inducing spot when you're surrounded by all the light and neon, all the crowds and the noises and the heat of summer, if you come in summer. Uh, I do recommend Shinjuku over Shibuya because I think there's more bars and restaurants and things to do and I actually hate Shibuya, I actively avoid it. I don't, it's very touristy, I can't stand this, the crossing. Uh, the overrated crossing and uh, yeah no I, I just don't like it there's more adventure to be had in Shinjuku for my money and uh, yeah but either way the lights will blow you away 8 out of 10 take a selfie near the most symbolically Japanese thing in the area with the caption I made it bitches well for a $2,000 holiday I'd say it's pretty much expected so 9 out of 10 although as someone who's not particularly narcissistic it's difficult for me to relate to that you know it's not something uh, something that I would ever do. Shut up. Tokyo Fish Market. Might as well take advantage of that jet lag. So Skiji Fish Market is the world's largest fish market and it's an amazing place. As you walk through it, it feels a bit like being underwater because you're surrounded by millions of fish and there's water leaking everywhere and uh, yeah, it just feels like you're underwater. However, it is closing next year, so the clock is ticking unfortunately. This year could be the last year that you can experience it. Uh, so I do recommend visiting this year. I'll give it an 8 out of 10 and if you want to see my experience of the tuna auctions when I went last year, you can find the video in the description box below. Drop bags at hotel, eat delicious katsu at Coco Ichibanya, and then buy Choco, magazines, and bath salts at the Conveni to enjoy in the hotel room super deep bath. Now that is the routine of a battle-hardened frequent traveller. You had me at Coco Ichibanya, the bath salts, well they were just, they were just the icing on the cake. Coco Ichibanya, or Coco's Curry House, came up quite a lot actually on people's answers, and it's easy to see why when you actually go there and have a delicious, reasonably priced curry. The only reason I don't go there more often is between the curry and the rice and the deep fried pork, I become pretty much knocked out afterwards. It's like a horse tranquilizer, and I'm done for once I've had it. But other than that, it's something you have to definitely try when you come here, and uh, you can find them pretty much on every street. So uh, yeah, Coco Ichibanya, 9 out of 10. The first thing I did after sleeping off the jet lag was go walking. No destination in mind, I just explored the city I was staying in and browsed a few stores along the way. This was the most popular upvoted response on Facebook and I can't find fault with it, 9 out of 10. Uh, my favourite spot to walk around in the morning is Shinjuku though. If you get up about 6am you can watch the beautifully peaceful streets suddenly become amongst the busiest streets on the planet because Shinjuku station is the busiest station in the world and uh, it's quite epic seeing that change. The first thing we did on July 8th was to walk to our hotel room window with this amazing view, gazing at the incredible city of Tokyo, watching the city go by, pinching ourselves, hoping it's not a dream. See, why stay in a windowless love hotel dungeon when you can stay in a room like that? 8 out of 10, although it can't have been cheap. Judging by the photo, you stayed in Shiodome. You can see Tokyo Tower, Dryman Hills Tower, and Mount Fuji in the distance there, which is a district with some of the best views in Tokyo. If you're looking for a romantic hotel room though, to either impress a partner or take the aforementioned I made it bitches photo, then uh, Shiodome or Shinjuku is probably your best bet. And uh, they don't come cheap though. Rooms like that, you're looking at about $300, $400 a night, which is the cost of about three or four nights in a love hotel. Hmm. What not to do? Don't go to Tokyo Disney Resort on the day you arrive after a 13 hour flight. Yeah, and indeed, don't go to Tokyo Disneyland on any day. Two years ago, I spent a small fortune to go there with a friend. And uh, in the space of eight or nine hours, we successfully got on an incredible three rides. It took three and a half hours to get on Space Mountain. Three and a half hours for a 50 second ride. Every minute that passed in that queue was a bitter reminder, never ever ever to go to Tokyo Disneyland again. Well, it seems a lot of people are certainly way more ambitious than I was on my first day. So the day I arrived, I was on the JET program, the Japan Exchange Teaching Program, and we got put up in a hotel room in Shinjuku for a few days while we had these really fun seminars. 
On the first day you have your afternoon and evening free. So what I did, I walked over to the Tokyo Metropolitan Tower uh, buildings behind the hotel and they have some of the best observation decks in the city. They're also free, which is awesome. But I went up there because I really wanted to get a grasp of how big Tokyo was. But I sat up there with an overpriced chocolate cake in the restaurant and just overlooked this incredible sort of scenery, this never-ending sprawl of buildings. And I just sort of sat there with my chocolate cake thinking, yeah, I've done it, I've made it to Tokyo. Uh, and then the jet lag hit me and I fell asleep next to the chocolate cake and was rudely awoken 20 minutes later by the staff throwing me out. Then in the evening I went out with some people and did karaoke and that was quite fun as well. But uh, yeah, there you go, loads of ideas to go with. I hope you found some sort of idea or inspiration within to uh, try on your trip. And do let us know, what was your favourite thing? What was your favourite idea? Let us know in the comments section. But for now though everyone, many thanks for watching. I'm off now to uh, have a sleep I think. I'm feeling pretty tired and I, yeah, I could really do with some some sleep. Ah, ha, 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 ha. <laughs>